Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live at IBM Pulse, IBM's premier cloud conference. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. It's our exclusive coverage of IBM Pulse. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And our next guest, Steve Robinson, the general manager, cloud platform services division, uh, in charge of all the greatness of the cloud here in terms of Blue Mix, platform as a service, all the middleware, big software investment. Uh, congratulations. Well, thanks, John, I appreciate it. It's been a great show for us, and uh, we had an exciting day yesterday. Um, uh, great, great event. The cloud messaging, the messaging's great. It's all hanging together, as we said. It's like the suit at Nordstrom's. Everyone wants that, <laughs> wants, to, wants to wear that suit, looks good. Um, great wraparound of the IBM yeah. uh, uh, software and the open open message, open technologies is really, really fundamental to all this, and the Cloud Foundry announcement. Dev at Pulse going on, four floors at the nightclub, all hacking away, uh, partying, really kind of an ingratiation, <laughs> not so much a hard sell, but more of No, just kind of bringing the community to the new new technologies here. Bringing the community, and, and you know, with the Q, we always talk about this modern era, yeah. you know, kind of like to bring the baseball analogy, you know, modern <laughs> era sports and, and technology, but this modern developer, the modern enterprise, really is about agile, it's really about speed, it's about cloud economics, it blending the services, having on-premise, it's complicated, but also there's demand. Yes. So speak as the general manager, your take on that. You look at that, the messaging's all in place, you're on a vector. Uh, the strategy obviously is in the middleware. Yeah. Soft layer is the foundation. Is that how you planned it, all coming together? <laughs> is that part of the well, plan? Yeah, it's been a, we, we've had it in the works for a little bit over a year now, and, and it's had a little bit of an organic path as we've gone through it. Uh, but we had to make some very fundamental decisions around it. What are we going to base it on? And then, as you mentioned, with community, I, I think nowadays with software, you've got to say what community groups are you going to have constituency with. You know, the, the Cloud Foundry group brings a certain one. You know, we've got a long-standing relationship with OpenStack that brings one as well. You'll see some popular third-party services they bring community at the same time. And then, of course, IBM. We've been building middleware and uh, software for many, many years. It's a very large profitable chunk of our business, we want to appeal to that programmer uh, as well. So yeah, we, we made some key decisions along the ways, but the, the goal was, is could we build a, a good solid open platform that was attractive to the, the, the born on the web shops, as well as kind of show a future path for our enterprise developer at the same time. So that's why you'll see the, the hooks back to the enterprise pieces, as well as some of the new stuff as well. So how much did the consumerization of IT uh, play into this? Obviously the consumer cloud, we, all those, those players are well known. B2B is wide open, yeah. as we were talking about earlier. Um, you have consumerization, which is, you know, if the app's good, it works, if not, it doesn't, right? So right. It's, there is a clear vote of confidence from the adoption side, but now you have the developer as aspect of it. So the API economy yeah. is very fundamental in all this. With that in mind, the old tactics of competing, both from a you know, client adoption sales for you guys, and also winning the ecosystem, is about having a good product. The lock-in spec is kind of a thing of the past, uh, as we see in terms of proprietary. Yeah. Talk about that openness. Recovering that, alcoholic. Is yeah. the, <laughs> the strategy of open and, and into this cloud era, how you guys are going to plan to compete. Yeah, well, I think the interesting thing is, like you said, the lock-in, we used to do lock-in by just having a proprietary stack all the way down, and you know, then we'd argue with you about every year when we renegotiated the enterprise deal over getting off the APIs, and that doesn't play anymore. You know, I think customers want to make sure they've got an angle that they can move, should they want to, and of course the, the challenge to us comes up is can we offer a better value, better hosting experience, uh, better support experience, uh, give them the 99.5 SLA in a, in a platform that they can't get from somebody else, but the quality of experience that they have with the platform would be better than, than, than elsewhere as well. So the bar set, and, uh, and this is going to be a little bit of an experiment with IBM. We're kind of breaking some of the, uh, the old ways that we've done stuff and moving to more of a self-service type sales model with Bluemix and changing our support policy, even uh, kind of how we engage with customers so is going to open up some new ground for us. Obviously composite applications, uh, web services, service-oriented architectures, things, the old buzzwords are still relevant part of the, the equation. Um, so I want to ask you about the customer impact. And you, sure. as you guys talk to customers, you guys are actually putting out a number of seven billion 
uh, in uh, by 2015 in revenue. It's going to be cloud related. So you got you know, you got P and L to deal with. So you've got some business to, to do. What is the customer demand right now from your standpoint? Well, I think the customer demand, they, they see the opportunity, you know, that both the, the cloud itself, and cloud is a very loaded word, whether that's private, whether that's hybrid, whether that's public, uh, but it is impacting the, uh, the data center. I think uh, most of the corporate accounts that we're talking to today are going to be looking at leveraging those resources in different mix going down the road. Now, the public cloud, I think, is very appealing to them. You know, we've kind of reached the stage where you know, uh, data and uh, elasticity and even the, t the type and style of application that can be built with some of these uh, public services are far beyond what could be imagined uh, before. So they, they see the advantages, uh, but I think they're trying to figure out how do I transition my development team to get to that and how can we fully take advantage of it as well. How peaked are the developers out there? I mean, obviously you, you announced the deal with cloud and databases asserts to NoSQL. Right. You guys have DB2. Uh, it's, it's, it's the bellwether within IBM. Right. Um, will DB2 run on clouds as well in the future? You guys envision things of that nature? I mean, is this a sea change within IBM? And how much is it? Of a, of a change you see this kind of being a lever within IBM? Well, I think it is going to be a future direction for us. So part of the challenge will be, are we going to simply take DB2 and throw it into Bluemix as, as kind of the way it stands today? No, we're going to, you know, we, we will have to do some API front-ending of that, and we may actually do some gateways so that you can bring that enterprise asset forward. Uh, there's strong demand in how do I take what I've built today and extend that out. You know, you extend it to the mobile community, extend it to a public community, et cetera, and it doesn't mean you take that full asset into a free, full relocation of it, but there's various ways that you can bur either be bursting with it or actually move that, uh, that asset forward so, as well. So I wonder if we could talk about just some of the basics. Right? We had David Pogue on yesterday. He said, yeah, he's a technology guy. He said, I don't really understand PaaS. Okay, I okay, said it, sure, right? Sure. Um, I've been around a long time, so I get a lot of this through osmosis, but let's go back to sort of the WebSphere days Right, in the whole middleware space. Sure. What is middleware? You got hardware, you got applications, you got an operating system, and you got this stuff in the middle. Yeah. Right? What, is, what is the function of that stuff in the middle? Well, the, uh, for most data centers, you know, they're having to provide a uh, kind of a, a base set of services around all of their applications. So you end up having to build a kind of a multiple platform approach to how do I do consistent data across the board? How do I do consistent system management and measuring the environment across the board? How do I lay out a consistent security uh, policy across the board? How do I lay out a consistent way to do transactions and uh, my business applications as well. So these are all services that these are all, I, well, they, they, well, Even with traditional middleware, they've always been kind of layers that I would put in my uh, my, my data center to, to really kind of build out my overall so IT peanut butter policy. across That's the, right. The, so the it's services center. that would be used across multiple applications and also kind of be a foundational architecture for all the software that they would either support or put out as well. Okay, so that's kind of the, the, the broad view and definition, if you will, of, right. of middleware. How has that evolved into PaaS? Is it really different? Is it the same? What's different? What's similar? Yeah, it's funny. I've been in IT for a little over 30 years now, and uh, you know, some concepts are identical, and then other areas uh, are, are brand new as well. When you get to the PaaS, you know, the platform as a service, and there's all kind of debates going on right now as to whether that's a popular term or uh, even a few analysts here say that's a fading term already. But, but basically is a, a capability to help you, you know, get an application uh, framed out, get the services wired into it, and then take the step that we never did with traditional development, also handle the deployment and the management of that application out on a public cloud domain as well. Right, so there's a DevOps angle there. Yeah, right? Very much so. I don't have And then actually the, the life cycle is extending now all the way to, we've done a lot of work on user-centered design, uh, all the way back to the DevOps piece as well. You know, traditional development always started with base requirement through performance testing, and then you tossed it over to a CIO to actually do the deployment of it. You know, a guy today has to see the whole spectrum. He's got to go from the, uh, the, the initial use case all the way to managing that application or watching that application run on the back end. And just to, to, to clarify for the audience, so when that gets tossed over the fence to the, for the deployment, yeah. um, oftentimes things have to change change because it doesn't quite work, it doesn't quite fit in with the inf infrastructure requirements, so the, the infrastructure team hacks the code and then all of a sudden something breaks. Well, so that's, we that's, the, the that's the old job. You, you got you to dedicate the hardware, you got to put it in the release plan, you know, maybe they're doing an SAP upgrade that year so you fall off the calendar, you got to make sure that it wires in with the pieces you have to wire in, what's the data specs, et cetera. You know, it used to take anywhere from uh, six to nine months to plan from end of development to full production. So a lot of finger out. pointing, a lot oh, of, hey, yes, it was oh, working yes. when I gave it to you, well, it's not working now, you got to fix it, well, it's not working because you messed it up, okay. So what's the modern paradigm then? Well, the modern paradigm actually uh, in the, the blue 
Bluemix demo itself, you say create an application. And we actually take a, a base instance based off your language of choice and build pack of choice. It runs immediately. So we're pushing it directly out on top of the software platform uh, through the Cloud Foundry pieces. Uh, you can bind services to it directly. Then you can start adding your uh, customization to it, et cetera. But it's a live program from second one. So you essentially are coding the infrastructure as that part of the correct. application. That's correct, that's correct. Right. Steve, talk about the, um, the priorities now, obviously. Um, and no, first, let, talk about the billion dollar software investment, because that was news yesterday. Sure. You guys sure. are uh, going to invest a billion dollars, and you know, we've kind of seen this before at Linux, right? I mean, right. you have a, a game we've taken, we've taken these big initiatives and we put the muscle behind it. Yeah, you give it the muscle, not only code, but you know, voting with code, as they say, in the open source community, but real money, I and mean, that, that attracts attention, right. certainly, there's a, there's a marketplace. Right. Uh, the value exchange going on with dollars, right? That's a good benchmark. That really helped the Linux market kind of solidify. Now, yeah. with this market, Talk about that billion dollar investment. What's the priorities of that and, and how you guys see that going forward? Definitely, well we, we definitely see cloud as uh, kind of a, a critical part of IBM's overall transition. Um, you know, earlier this year is, you know, part of it is, okay, if we're going to play heavily in the public cloud space, how big is that infrastructure going to be and where is it going to reside? Uh, so earlier we announced an investment to take the software and uh, expand that out to 35 to 40 pods worldwide. So uh, a lot of countries. Uh, On we, top of the existing footprint, you guys had like 12 data centers. That's correct. Had like that's 13. correct. So right now we are blasting this thing out and getting it into a lot of countries that, uh, you know, you don't see a lot of public cloud uh, infrastructure. And with the data policy rules, et cetera, you got to be local, you got to be in those countries. Uh, as well, uh, with the uh, the Blue Mix announce, uh, of course we've uh, we've named a, a whole new focus. Uh, we have almost every group within software group now focusing on uh, how do we. Uh, turn existing technologies uh, into uh, services. Uh, we have new initiatives like our, our mobile services that we announced yesterday as well. Coming into that, uh, you see our contribution and participation at the Cloud Foundry Org yesterday. So we have a team focusing on open standards and uh, participating in that community as well. You'll see our acquisitions of companies like Clouded, et cetera, to show we're putting money behind this new technology, not simply morphing our old stuff forward, but we got to have the popular services out there as well. Uh, and then even with our, we have a huge portfolio as more traditional software as a service uh, that we are going to be extracting APIs from that as well and uh, putting that into the environment. So let's talk about that, that layer you mentioned, all the IBM software groups. That means essentially you're essentially creating that API economy within, the, within the groups? Yeah, if you hear Robert LeBlanc that runs <laughs> the bulk of it, at cloud first. And, uh, and I think we're going through that mental change within IBM is what does it mean to really expose these services out uh, on the web? Yesterday we announced 31 services with Bluemix, which uh, compared to some of the other passes in the market was uh, almost a logarithmic ramp up compared to uh, some of the guys out there. Did and it's, it's been a, and we'll keep adding to it. it the, the, the core term has been IBM as a service, the whole company. <laughs> and, and is that a cultural change? I mean, IBM has the, has always had a good DNA going back to the early days of the management team that sure. founded it. It seems to be, have that same cadence uh, through the culture. It's never really lost its, its soul over the years. The, the new modern IBM now is an API. How, what is this culture like now? Explain to the folks out there sure. this well, culture and, and how it keeps that soul of the original IBM and and, and the new, somewhat structural change with the sure. APIs has affected the Well, it, it is a transformation to us. So you could easily say that we just kind of keep doing what we're doing and we, found, we naturally fall into new technology spaces, but it doesn't work that yeah. way. You know, IBM does bring its core core competency, you know, you know excellent management environment. You know, we, we do have a, a very aggressive business outlook. You know, we do buy companies, we do shift resources, we do get into You do new business. Areas. We do <laughs> business, and, and, we, and, uh, make... and we're very cautious. We, we can't sit on the laurels, and uh, we have to watch all new trends as they emerge, and, and uh, Mr. Rometty's been very aggressive to say cloud is going to be a key transformation that we will not miss, and I think we're hitting this one uh, as aggressive or more aggressive than we have had some in the past. So mentally, uh, you'll see us, if you go down to Austin, Texas, you know, we've taken three floors of our, our huge lab down there and have turned that into a design center, simply focused on UI, uh, how we build our apps, completely changed that, uh, et cetera. We have- To energize the company. Of she's, course, She yeah. said, this is a mandate, we're not missing cloud. That is it. And, and it, big it, data too, I know she's- Well, we've, got a, we've, got a, we've got a handful going, <laughs> right? <laughs> big data, mobile, and cloud, those are almost impregnated in our head right now <laughs> as well. But the, the, the money will be there, the culture will be there, the hiring will be there, the, the merger and acquisition piece will be there, and it will be a transformation completely. It's, it's not just promises, promises. This is real, this is the real deal for IBM. Talk about the patent and the technology. You know, we've always been impressed with the fellows we've had on with distinguished engineers. Yeah. IBM, 
you know, research is well known around the world, obviously, uh, in, from just, you know, non-applied, just, sure. you know, and, and applied research. Talk about the patents and how that's going to play into this in the balance between doing business as IBM, solving customer problems, but also giving back to the open side of the community. How are you guys going to handle those patents? Well, it's always a kind of a, a delicate balance. Uh, we uh, do maintain the largest patent portfolio uh, in the world, and which we did it again uh, last year. And a lot of it is, is really in kind of you know brand new spaces. Now, just because we, we do a patent doesn't mean that we can't donate that to a to an open community, et cetera. Uh, and I think you'll find also with the with the open groups, IBM does more than simply participate and uh, and consume from an open community. You'll see us putting board seats in place. We're helping do the governance around these. Cloud Foundry. We were one of the, the, you know, we were working directly with the the, the pivotal folks on, on how to set up an open source uh, type of group, and also kind of teaching them from our experience that we had learned from Eclipse, uh, et cetera, through that as well. So, so I want to go back to that notion of IBM as a service. So you mentioned uh, Ginny, her predecessor Sam Palmasano said, no matter what business you're in, you're going to get commoditized. And yep. of course, it's coming from a services guy. Um, so this <laughs> idea of IBM as a service. Uh, and this, IB, this idea of IBM, uh, an API into IBM, is that a is that a realistic vision with that massive portfolio? And how do you make that happen? Well, we we, we think we have to make it a, a vision. So, and, and I think for us, if we, if we decide that IBM is a service, it, it has a very long tail to that decision as well. You know, you're moving more to where we have done B to C, you know, business to major customer. And uh, as we look forward, we see IBM maybe having to trans transfer into B to you, where instead of dealing with, you know, a small organization and uh, one of our major banks or financial institution, insurance company, et cetera, maybe I'm dealing with 20,000 employees within them that are dealing directly with IBM. So uh, I think you'll see, you know, we updated our IBM cloud pages yesterday, which uh, shows us uh, kind of bringing together our total story. And, uh, and also, you know, how do you see IBM? How do you discover with IBM? How do you purchase from IBM? You know, you'll see soon the capability of just swiping a credit card that could, you know, that was very difficult to do within IBM uh, prior. How do we support you now more online? How do we get you sales advice, demo, even uh, the, how we do free trials, et cetera, is going to shift with us as well. So, obviously a lot of difference between IBM and competitors generally, and, but uh, specifically I want to talk about um, open. Okay. And I want to talk about this notion of API. Amazon turned the data center into an API. We're talking about this vision of an API into IBM. You guys are, are playing very strongly the open card. Yes. Um, and but but what's the difference if, if there's an IBM API and say an Amazon API or any other API? What's the difference between that con conceptually, you know, and in, in, in the context of open? Well, I think at, at open, it's you know. It's almost table stakes these days. I think for to attract anyone to your platform, to attract anyone to uh, you know your software, uh, you know the programmer community today is getting more and more picky. Uh, one of the things that they fear the most is lock-in, and uh, and, it, and it's not fear from being set with a single vendor, but should their projects, should their technologies really take off, they want to make sure that they can grow with that. You know, you know say I've got a video game that. Uh, a launch and it's it's 100 one week and it's nine million the next week. You know, am I picking the underpinnings that allow me to scale to that? Uh, it's almost consumer grade scale that we have to be able to branch out into. So I think we look at openness by multiple levels. So uh, with Blue Mix, almost any language of choice you can bring in. You can bring in any uh, development tooling that you want to have as well. And then with the Cloud Foundry as the underpinnings, should you decide to go somewhere else, you can actually pick your application up and and move it to uh, any of the other cloud providers, heaven forbid that happened, but it also raises the bar. We, we want to keep you on the platform, but we've got to do it by more than just API lock-in. Steve, I want to talk about uh, cloud equals growth. I see some assessment <laughs> signage there. It's a key part of your message. Yeah. Um, you're a GM, so you're, you have to look at the business, uh, all aspects of it, uh, especially the profit loss, and, and which is the pro profitable. You guys are pushing down some good numbers. Talk about the opportunity for folks out there in cloud. What, what is the real growth opportunity for uh, your customers, customers, developers, sure. why are you guys um, so bullish on cloud? I mean, obviously some obvious reasons, but like, you know, deep down, this is a change. Yep. And, and fundamentally, it's an opportunity uh, for growth. Um, and we're seeing mobile first, obviously is a key fundamental piece yep. of the new generation. And businesses are going with mobile apps, changing retail, transactions. Yep. Why is cloud such a massive growth opportunity? Well, I think you look at it, it's, you know, the cloud and the variance of cloud has really dropped a lot of boundaries out there. And, you know, you can look at it to say it's dropped uh, competitive boundaries now. Uh, you know, 
you know, three guys in a garage can now compete with what used to be. Uh, you know, I had to have racks of hardware and racks of SATA. It used to be a, a high entry point to be able to, to get into that. So the barriers of entry are, are tremendously low, but the, the barriers of reach now have extended uh, significantly. I can now get to customers in ways that are just were completely unthought of uh, before, and that's what we see the opportunity. And I think also technology used to be kind of uh, in the corner of major corporations. You know, it was the CIO's domain and uh, the raised floor and where the mainframe was, et cetera. And I think nowadays every single line of business, technology is one of their key investment areas, and it's in the forefront now. It's in every corner of the business, and the mobile, the reach, the cell phone, the push, et cetera, is how they're starting to reach their customer now. And how hard is it to get there? I mean, you may, it's easy to get into a business as a startup, but scale's a hard thing, right? You got that. At some point, there's a barrier to entry once you have certain scale. Talk about that competitive strategy that you guys have. But, what is the core thesis on the competitive strategy? Well, I think what we bring to the table, of course, is you know we've been in software for many, many years. You know, uh, going on our fourth, fourth decade around it as well. Our customer base, of course, looking at IBM to help them lay their overall strategies out and and also bring the brain power to it uh, as well. And the breadth of IBM as we pick a new initiative. Like I said, we launched 31 services yesterday. We'll probably uh, multiply that significantly by the end of the year. A smaller company, just the, the, the ability to pull that together would be a, a challenge uh, for them as well. So I, th I think there's many things we have to, to come to the table with, and IBM's going to have some challenges as well. You know, some of these communities are very tight. IBM coming in saying they want to be the, you know, the tool or platform of choice for the new millennial programmer. It's a little hard. You know, we, we don't know you guys. We never used to before. You're, you know, you're, you're not some of our favorite tools. So uh, we're, we're going to have a challenge away, as well. Just get away some of that uh, free free Watson. I mean, you get them, win them yeah, over. Yeah, well, Watson's got them going. And we have a service soon coming into Blue Mitch that you can uh, ask you questions as well. Yeah, the past layer is a battleground. Certainly the middleware software is a key part of the value proposition. Uh, it's exciting for computer scientists, developers, and businesses. Uh, my final question to uh, end the segment is, What's your what's your goal for the next uh, next six months of the year? Now that Blue Mix is out in beta, what 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 are you uh, talking to your teams about? What's the marching orders? Well, what we'll be doing next is uh, we we just kind of opened the door yesterday, so it's called open beta. So we'd had it closed, and now we're uh, you know, we had several thousand just uh, join up on the platform last night. So we'll be uh, building the community around it and the base around it as well, adding more services to it, of course. And, uh, and I think the the trick that I think none of the passes have tried to attack yet is how do we uh, make this attractive to the enterprise developer. For the new millennial, you know, they can use lighter weight tools, they can move fairly quick, but uh, when the rock band breaks up, what happens to that application? Uh, if we're really going to bring this over to the enterprise developer, we've got to have a richer set of uh, DevOps tooling, we've got to have the hooks and connectors that helps them bring their existing environment forward into this, and hopefully we'll be able to bring much more integration in that makes us a more seamless experience. Okay, the general manager of the cloud okay. services here on theCUBE, breaking it down. It's the premier cloud show, IBM Pulse, notable. 70% of the attendees are first timers. Uh, real good transition, great story. You guys have a good strategy, I, you know, Dave and I were commenting. Yeah. Uh, it hangs together, it's legit, you guys are putting some muscle behind it, and uh, it's obvious the vibe is pretty energetic here. So, congratulations. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage, Silicon Angle's coverage of IBM Pulse Live in Las Vegas. We'll be right back after this short break.